The civil society organizations now say they are considering moving to court if parliament pushes aside or postpones the spending limits as published by the IABC. Our leaders don't want to, to, to take that responsibility to disclose their, their sources of, uh, of, of funding, to disclose people who are funding their campaigns, uh, to disclose the amounts that they are getting. And this is really critical in terms of ensuring that there's sanity in terms of how campaigns are financed in this country. The limits place a cap of 4.4 billion shillings for a presidential campaign a cap of 17 billion shillings for a political party, while those seeking gubernatorial, senatorial, women rep, MPs and MCA's positions varied as per the size to be covered in each county. We urge citizens to reject the growing culture of receiving or asking for handouts, which has immensely contributed to and emboldened the political class against spending limits as they are convinced that ordinary citizens lack moral, moral authority to challenge them. The Committee on Delegated Legislation will be presenting its report on their blockage of the IABC regulations to Parliament next week. Kennedy Muredi, NTV. All right, let's stay with politics. And as the One Kenya Alliance retreats to Naivasha to plan for the 2022 general elections, Deputy President William Ruto has hit out at his political rivals, who he says have come together with the sole purpose of challenging him instead of serving Kenyans. Nayoma Sampao has that story. St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in the Great North, Nairobi, was the setting for political talk this Sunday. Accompanied by his allies at the church service, Deputy President William Ruto took the opportunity to call out his political rivals. His criticism comes just days after President Uhuru Kenyatta met with leaders from the One Kenya Alliance and the ODM leader Railu Odinga. This was seen as part of efforts to form a strong coalition to face off with William Ruto. Musiogope. Huh? ni mingi. So unawana vile wanaume wame gang up. Lakini mime ni maambia nini gang up. Ruto made his comments a day before a scheduled meeting of the One Kenya Alliance kicks off in Naivasha. Sources say the meeting is part of moves to rally support around possible bid by ODM leader Rilo Odinga to run for presidency. Lakini sisi tumepanga vile tutabadilisha uchumi. Ruto's allies are challenging their competitors to present their development agenda for Kenyans. Unapo kejeliwa, unapo rushiwa matope, wanapo kutusi, wewe ujue kweli unafanya kazi ya mungu. Sisi wote tuungane kama mahasla, tuonge mambo ya uchumi wetu. Sababu Kenya itaungana Kama sisi wote, kila mtu anaweza kujimudu kimaisha na uchumi bora. Na Yoma Sampao, NTV. All right, and away from politics, when Charles Semo, a middle-aged man from Kitengela, left a bar to head home, he never thought he would end up in the hands of kidnappers. His kidnappers posed as police officers, and he was rescued by border border riders a few minutes later. Cases of insecurity in Gitangala have been on the rise, which have birthed concerns amongst the community. Today, protesters blocked access to the Kitangala police station over the brutal murder of four young men who were profiled by residents because of their appearances. Ngina Kirori has that report. They are an enraged lot, with the center of their anger being the occupants of this white vehicle. This group of residents in a senior town were stirred by the sound of screams coming out of this car, registration number KCT-670L. The screams belonging to an elderly man who had left a bar moments earlier, only to be bundled off by a group of five men who claimed to be police officers. 
It would later emerge that the men were lying about their identity as they later changed their story and said they were healthcare workers. <laughs> The victim screams attracted help from Buda Buda operators who blocked the car on all sides, ultimately sandwiching the suspects between an irate mob. It was only after intervention from police officers that the men were saved from what would have turned to be a fatal situation, but the crowd were having none of it. The car was towed to Kitengela police station. And elsewhere, a group of bikers who are friends and associates of four young men who are viciously attacked and killed by residents in Kisaju area Kitengela blocked all operations at Kitengela police station, demanding justice for the slain four. Victor Mwangi Wanjiro, his brother Frederick Muredi Wanjiro, and their two friends Mike George and Nicholas Musa had gone to Kisaju to buy chicken for a birthday dinner when residents stopped the four who were on motorbikes, speared them to death, and burnt their motorbikes. Hakuna mtu wa mearrest, tumenda ground na omara nene so far, hakuna kitu mefanyika, na mtu wa suwadanganye kuna haki, hapo mahalu wa metufikisha hakuna haki enye wanatenda hapa, ni watu ambie tutumie minisingine kama wataki kufuata haki. As family and friends held a memorial service for the four, they have taken issue with what they term as snail piece investigations by police officers and are demanding that the culprits are apprehended. Gena Kirori, NTV. All right, two bodies of Kenyan fishermen who have been tortured, killed and dumped in Lake Victoria have been retrieved along Sindio Beach in Homabe County. The two are said to have died in the hands of Ugandan security forces. The two bodies are said to be of fishermen who disappeared in Lake Victoria last week when they were attacked in the deep waters while fishing by Ugandan soldiers. If you check it properly, you will find that that body do have injuries. It means the death might have arises from an injury caused by somebody. The agony that our people have gone through is too much. Uh, you find Sometimes you find that our people are being killed and thrown inside the water. They are being left there. A week ago, Michael O'Hara was alleged to have been shot, killed and dumped in the lake by Ugandan soldiers, but his body is yet to be found. And although the government said the Minister of Foreign Affairs was looking into the matter, the locals say they are yet to hear back. Tulipeana mpaka maganda ya risasi ile ilitumika ikabake kwa bot. Kutokea siku hiyo, tangu leo, hakuna hata mwenye meongea, hata kiongozi hata moja. These people, they kill us there, dump us in water, and Probably they make sure that we are not found because they ensure that body is properly sunk down the sea, the water. The late mistreatment and torture from Ugandan officers has so far paralyzed fishing activities in Lake Victoria as many fishermen fear for their lives and the government has been urged to look into the matter. Bernard Ojuang, NTV. Now, residents of Masai Mau Narok are calling on the government to find them an alternative place to resettle three years after they were forcefully evicted from their homes. Hundreds who are now living in makeshift camps want the government to intervene as they can hardly meet their basic needs. Ruth Sarmoe has more. Saptet Camp is one of the scattered settlements on the edge of Mao Forest that hosts over 100 evictees of the Mao area. In 2018, thousands of residents that were living in the Mao Forest were forcefully evicted by the government, claiming that they had encroached into the Mao Forest. <laughs> Sasa 
Martin, you are Three years on, the residents are living in poor conditions while many are fearing for the health of their elderly kin and infants. Though the government says that the presence of the residents in the forest was illegal, the residents maintain they acquired the land legally. Human rights groups have condemned the evictions without giving an alternative space for the residents to resettle. The residents want the court to expedite the case, hoping that justice will be served. <laughs> It means that and there was no notice. You cannot cancel what you gave out. In September 2020, the government set up a multi-agency team to spearhead a process of resettling the residents, but progress is yet to be made. Ruth Sarmoy, NTV. Our students in an essence boys school in Ban Forest region, Wasingishu County, have been forced to go on an early midterm following early morning tensions that resulted after a student passed on last night due to suspected COVID-19 complications. Parents who came to collect their sons have accused the school principal of allowing the students to leave the premises without taking any precautions such as conducting a mass testing or establishing the cause of death of the student. Efforts to speak with the school administration hit a wall, but the Wasingishu Commissioner, Stephen Kihara, confirmed the incident via a phone call calling for patience as investigations begin. The government, in particular, the Ministry of Health, concerned to take action on this matter and conduct a mass testing in this area of Burnt Forest. And also, before the students come in, we would like to know what exactly what exactly happened to the boy? One of us who are on a side in honor to enter to Metangana now, now to become a corona, Sasa in Kumanisha to see Sasa or Kazma Ban Forest to Kokonashida. Let's now look at the COVID situation and 1,550 patients have recovered from the disease, 1,426 from home based isolation and care program, and 124 are from various health facilities. Total recoveries are now stand at 2,922,021 patients have succumbed to the disease, all of them being late death reports from various facilities on diverse dates in the month of June, July and August. 690 patients are separately on supplemented oxygen with 658 of them in general wards, while 32 in high dependency units. Meanwhile, the uptake of the second dose among those who have received the first dose is at 58%, with the majority being males at 55%, while female at 45%. Proportion of adults vaccinated currently stands at 2.7%. As of today, 2,333,277,000 vaccines have so far been administered across the country. Of these, our total first doses are 1,287,110. All right, and TV we can take a short break. We'll be right back with more stories. Don't go too far. <laughs>